All right. So one of the things I always really want to do, um, figure out how to do, and you don't really need to, but I felt like I needed to, was I wanted to be able to run a multi-node Kubernetes cluster on my desktop when I'm doing work. So the reality is Docker for desktop, Docker desktop, desktop Docker, um, which is a single um, server, single node environment is probably plenty for most people. But if you wanted to play with networking and some of the other pieces and figure out how pods talk to each other or other overachiever kind of stuff, then you need a multi-node environment. So it turns out there's actually a pretty cool environment that's actually used to test Kubernetes changes, and it's called Kind. And so I'm going to kind of use Kind uh, to do a multi-node Docker setup all inside of a single Docker instance. And the way this is going to work is what Kind does, if I can get this picture to come up right, what Kind does is it basically simulates a node with all the control elements inside of a single container. So this is containers and container. So the containers have the ability to run containers inside of them, kind of like they're running Docker inside of themselves. So there's a bunch of stuff in the worker nodes besides the pod, right? And this was an example I was doing where I was going to deploy four copies of Nginx, but only having three worker nodes. And so in this case, I'd end up with one copy of Nginx in each pod with an extra copy in one of the pods and or an extra copy in one of the nodes. And so there's also a bunch of control pieces in here. And then there are control nodes. There are control node containers for a cluster. And so you can have redundant copies of that. And then I kind of just broke out some of the other pieces here, um, like the API server. So if you were to deploy Nginx in here on your local machine and you don't have a cloud-based load balancer, right, um, you can still get to it from the browser on your desktop. You basically do that by bringing up the kube control proxy, and it will create a proxy between that and your API server. And it turns out all the nodes in your cluster, like in a service, are actually visible, can be projected through the API server, through URLs. And I've got a different, um, the, the previous uh, YouTube video actually covered this. All right, so what are we gonna do, really? Um, if we come down here and we look at this, right? So I'm gonna actually assume you're doing this on Windows, but you could totally do this on a Mac. And on a Mac, there's some things that are a little bit easier and actually nothing changes, to be honest. So um, I'm going to run this on, you really want to, if you're doing Docker on a Windows machine, you really want to use WSL2. Uh, and the way the Docker runs, it doesn't run in a VM. It doesn't runs in the WSL2 environment, which is amazing. Uh, so you don't have that VM sizing problem anymore. And then um, what we can do is, well, I guess that's the important part, right? Uh, so with Docker for desktop, Docker desktop, you can bring up Kubernetes with it, and that'll bring up the single node. In my case, what I'm going to do is um, I'm not going to enable Kubernetes through the UI, through the settings panel. See if anything's running. I can do C-U-B-E-C-T-L cluster info. Hey, connections refused. And you know why that is? That's because the controller for this, where we're sending the kube control commands on, is down, right? And that's because I didn't enable kube con control. I didn't enable uh, Kubernetes. So... What I'm going to do is uh, I've already installed Kind on this machine. Basically, you just run this script, and I 0.7 is the latest at the time I made the video. And when I install, when I run that, it's actually going to install in the Unix subsystem in WSL2. It's going to install Kube. So let or Kind. So let me. And Kind is just a way to provision the clusters and make all that set up, and then you run Kube control commands after that. So if I were to do Kind conversion. I get 0 0.7, which is what I expect from the instructions. Okay, so if I want to bring up a five node cluster, all I really need to do is run this kube control, create cluster, create a config file, and then um, and then just run the kube control create command. And so you can see here, um, this script, if you actually run it, I got this from another site and I will need to add a link to my blog about it. So if we look where I'm at, we can see I actually have three workers.yaml. And you can see it's there. Can I make that bigger? Nope. All right. I apologize, but this is 720p, so you should be able to make it zoom up. So if I were to do this, what will happen is it should create a cluster. So I'm going to, we're going to wait. So it's actually going to go out, find the images for the worker nodes and for the control nodes. It's going to download those and it's going to prepare those nodes. Um, and this takes a couple minutes, so I can show you what the output's going to look like. 
right? So we can see it's preparing the nodes. It configures the external load balancer, which makes sense. Um, it starts the control plane, creates the storage class for the storage, and it adds the extra control plane nodes, and then it adds the worker nodes, right? So if I were to come back over here, we can see that it's starting the control plane. So that puts us right here. This is going to take a minute. And then after this happens, what I should be able to do is just rerun this command. Oop, not kind version. Cube control cluster info and see where I'm at, right? Do, 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 do. What else are we going to talk about? Oh, yeah. So we can walk through what the rest of what we're going to do. What we should see after that, when this thing gets fully deployed, if I were to do a cube control get nodes, that shows me how many nodes are actually deployed in my cluster. I have a virtual cluster where each node actually happens to be running a container in container, um, Docker like inside the container. So when I get do a cube control get nodes after these five nodes, I should see two control plane nodes and two worker nodes. So let's see where we're at. Oh, we're so close. We're joining the control plane nodes now, right? Um, so that's this one right here, joining the control plane nodes. The other thing is just to show you how this is really implemented, right? If we were to do a Docker PS after this is deployed, we'll actually see um, an HA proxy, which is the external load balancer for the cluster. And then we'll see, um, and then we'll see the five nodes. Now, three of those will be um, data nodes and two of them will be control nodes. So let's go back up here and see where we're at. We can go back to here. Hey, we're done. So now if we were to do cube control cluster info, we actually see that we have a cluster up, right? There's no error anymore here before we had an error. So we know there's a master running on this address and we know have, we have cube DNS. So we could hit the API server from here and we'd be good. Um, but what I'd like to do is actually here, so that did cube control cluster info. What I'd like to do is cube control get nodes cube ctl get nodes and we can see that we have the five nodes here right so this is actually if we were to do deployments now it's going to allocate those across the nodes so we can actually do a multi-node deployment if we do it from the other video where we did two a two node nginx one of them will end up on each of two worker nodes and one will be idle um, the only other thing here oh i was going to do uh, docker ps so you can see here that um, we have five nodes, right? And we can see that uh, three of them are workers because their names are worker, worker, and the other two are control plane. So I actually have a five node cluster deployed now. Um, the only thing that I probably would say from here is we could get the context. So we'll do kube control config get context. Kube ctl control get. Oh, that's not what I meant to do. I meant to do kube control config get context. There we go. And we can see there's three contexts. So when Docker is created, Docker desktops created, it actually creates two kube uh, contexts. Uh, the one we're operating in, which is the current one, is kind of. So if we operate in this space here, um, we'll be operating within that Kubernetes cluster. If we were to change the context, then we can make other things happen. But since I don't have Docker desktop Kubernetes running, the native one with the single um, single node version, these actually aren't very useful right now. That would only be if I were to delete this kind cluster and then roll over in the settings panel back to the other thing. So that's pretty much all I wanted to show. Um, if I were to spin up an HA, a kube control proxy, which I'm going to do in another window here, which you can't see, um, it turns out um, when I, I brought up a cube control proxy in another window. And so that's actually 127.0.01. So if I were to go to that now, um, we're actually on the API server for this cube Kubernetes cluster that's running in kind. And it looks just like any other one, right? It's got kind of like all the APIs on it. Um, we actually could start um, navigating into this thing and looking in namespaces if we had apps deployed and then we'd be able to go like i showed in another time if because we ran the um, kube control proxy our web browser can actually use that proxy to reach endpoints that are inside the cluster that might be like set up as a cluster ip uh, but that's kind of outside the scope of this so that's it um, the final thing really is to bring this cluster down um, and all i need to do that is cluster because uh, i named this thing dev right if i were to just delete I can copy this over here and paste it and hit that. 
And so this is gonna bring the whole cluster. So like if you're setting up a test environment, you can stand up the cluster, deploy your app, test it, and then just delete the whole cluster. And there's no artifacts from the previous test. I hope you uh, can make use of a multi-node Kubernetes cluster on your desktop.